So g'day and welcome to, oh we've got 20 gigabytes, oh that's beautiful. So, <clears throat> welcome to uh, my geology channel. And well, if you don't know me, my name is Glenn and I like to go around and look at geological exposures. Also do some little videos about here and there, geological maps, rocks, and all that stuff. But today uh, we're going to look at... Uh, the Melbourne Formation. So, uh, is this actually? Yeah, that's. I think my gimbal's broken. It seems to be statically shaking. So, yeah, we're going to look at the Melbourne Formation. In this part, it used to be classed as the Dargol Formation. Uh, so. It's a sequence of boomers, so if you don't know what a boomer is, it's just a turbidite that has uh, five different levels. Uh, the first one is, wow, how do I get down there again? Uh, okay, the first one is coarse grain, so like a conglomerate with like grey whack. The second level is uh, grey whack, coarse sandstone then it goes into medium to fine sandstone with a turbidite sequence then it goes into mudstones and uh, then you get into massive mudstones so mudstones fine bedded then massive mudstones okay so I'm at the place where I am Okay, so this is it. Here's the Plenty River. And behind me, we have, basically, this is just basalt. So, obviously, it's covered in vegetation. That's the, the thing about Victorian geology. Uh, it, we get at least five, six hundred millimetres of water per year, rain. So, uh, vegetation quickly covers over, so like... Probably a hundred years ago that would have been bare because it would have been cleared and there's lots of weeds and there also reforestation so there's lots of eucalypts native plants when I come here in 2009 none of this native vegetation was really here oh, across the river was I'm going to talk about it just in front of me there was a there was an apple tree I think it was an apple tree I uh, looks like they got rid of it. I don't, that might be it there. Okay. So, somewhere here is an unconformity, an angular unconformity, because this Silurian rock underneath uh, is deformed. So, you've got, uh, we'll have a look soon. Uh, you've got anticlines and synclines. So, the striking dips vary it varies all over the place but then you've got various basalt flows so you can see up there is a basalt for outcrop and over here we have an aquifer actually percolating out of the ground obviously the grass is quite thick and kangaroos have actually been sleeping on it uh, so here you go So this is pretty much waterlogged all the time. Probably starting from about here. This is where the aquifer comes out of the ground. And so you can see. So, so it's quite waterlogged. So you can see the actual aquifer. So this is probably coming out of the basalt. From an actual lake that's over there. So basalt flow rate. It's actually quite fast, uh, a few meters per second. But with this siltstone, mudstone, uh, the flow rate's probably a few millimeters per second, so it slows down quite a lot. Oh, excrement! And as I'm walking along, you can, you can hear that it's quite quite flooded. So here's another discharge got algae on it so I wouldn't drink it 
and it's probably the same all the way around but this is the most prominent area okay so you see a lot of weeds or kangaroo shit and I did make a video probably about four, a few years ago about this area so there's native weeds and we've got cassinia plant this is one of my favorite plants oh no that, that looks like a bottle brush obviously they had probably just a few plants and it's just expanding quite rapidly so you need to be careful with snakes. There should be snakes out today. It's about 20 degrees. Uh, next set day should be 35. Beautiful. Okay, so this is the rock that would have come up there. Uh, this is basalt. Obviously you got vesicles on top. So this was a, a top of flow at one time. This is a large boulder. Broken green falling down. Okay. Oh, I don't remember this eucalyptus being there. But as you can see, we've got blackberries over there. We've got some well, deciduous plants. When I come here, these wattles, they didn't exist. So, 10 years, I've actually grown quite big. there's a lot more native birds I don't, I don't know what bird that is but it looks very beautiful okay so that looks horrible the bird's gone Got some more acacia. This is also native, but I don't know what plant it is. Doesn't have any smell. Acacia, so there's one acacia there, another acacia. This one's quite spiky. Okay, so where I am now is the Melbourne formation underneath. Obviously, this is the soil, and the Melbourne formation is supposed to be dark grey to black when it's fresh. But obviously, a lot of this is yellow, so here it is. A lot of this is yellow. We've got grey, so here's some of the uh, looks like. The original colour. So here's some of the actual Melbourne formation. It looks like we've got sandstone there, siltstone, and urinated. Okay, so this is all pretty eroded and this is pretty much just the soil at this point but the Melbourne formation is supposed to be silt stone, stand stone, mainly fin bedded. Uh, most beds have boomer sequences. So if uh, not too sure on the boomer sequence so it goes from A to E. So A is the bottom. It's massive grey whack or conglomerates. Uh, poorly lamp sorted conglomerates, shall I say. B is laminated grey whack and sandstones. C current bedded sandstone. So you should actually see the actual current flow. D laminated mudstones. 
and E massive mudstone. So, okay, so at least two years ago, I could actually reach this outcrop, but this plant here, the last two years, has actually gone massive. And, yeah, that, that's pretty hurty hurty. So we'll just go here, have a look at the formation. So obviously you can see the actual structure. When it weathers, it's a lot easier. And here is probably the sandstone. The so sandstone's supposed to have been indurinated with iron oxide, so it makes it a lot harder. And therefore, a lot more resistant to erosion. So all this stuff is just iron oxide sandstones. Same with here. So here we've got the mudstones. So these ones pretty weathered and they, they pretty much break apart easy. So there's two difference. When these weather, they actually become a lot softer, easier to weather out. When the sandstones weather, they become a lot harder. So that's why you have a lot of these iron oxide nodules. So thin bedded and I don't see any turbidity currents. So what I'm seeing here is in the boomer sequence. Uh, what I'm seeing is a B, so laminate grey whack, sandstone. Uh, most of it's D. So it's just laminated mudstone or fine sandstones. And here I might see part of C, so this looks like it shows current flow. And the current flow is actually to the actual uh, west. It comes from the west, so it's going this way. Actually west. No, it's going that way. South is that way, north is that way, east is this way. So this is not going to show you the actual current flow uh, because we're going with the actual current. So we need to find somewhere. Okay, it looks like we've got a, a large thick band of a uh, sandstone. It seems to erode at an angular, looks like 90 degree angle compared to the actual siltstone, which is a lot easier to weather than the actual rock. So, uh, let's go across the river if I can. And... So you can see the dip on that one. Looks like it's about 45 degrees east. Looks like it might be northeast. Oh, this bracken is growing really big. It's becoming a lot more common, but you won't find the bracken up on the high ridges. And the bracken hasn't jumped this path in the last 10 years, so it's still staying on that side. Sometimes I do see it on this side, but not today. It is coming quite thick. Oh, I love this bottle brush. Nice beautiful yellow flowers. As you can see over there. Bracken has jumped over now. Oh, this tree's still here. I thought they would have removed it. I guess it's there to stop uh, motorbikes going through the air. Oh, that was probably a rabbit. Okay, so what we see over here is an anticline, and in between there should be a syncline. Obviously, it's not exposed. 
uh, a lot of it's been eroded and there's another syncline another anticline so this is tightly folded although it's not as folded as to actually break it so ductile form deformation more black bottles beautiful this is a mana gum I knew we have two holes. These are probably about a meter deep. It's starting to be infilled. I'd say within 20 years or something that there'll be nothing. Here's another one. And oh, they put a lot of new plants here. And you collect this. Okay, see if we go on this side. This is actually a formation, but on this side it has a lot of scree deposits. It's been eroded from a formation, so this is probably being deposited by the river. Uh, as it's the river is coming around there, it's eroding the other side, and it's leaving deposits on this side. So all this is just fill. So if we pick one up. This looks like sandstone. Turbidic, it looks like sandstone. It's a. It's not flat laminated, so it's probably turbidite sequence. And you see, a lot of this material is yellow, so it's been uh, indurinated with iron oxide. It looks like. And this is just soil. Has a lot of uh, organic material in it. Hmm. Huh. This you cooked this tree was near last time I come. And last time I come here, this is all bare, so you could actually see the silk sign. Okay, so this area has been excavated. Uh, probably when it was actually a farm. Probably used the material for something else. So Chrome Homestead is just over that way. It's an old farmhouse. Okay, so if you look at this side, you can see a lot of these pebbles are rounded. I do get a lot of angular, so the angular is probably from material behind me. And that looks platy, could be a mica, could be something else. So being angular it would have been deposited from the actual river course. So once this makes a formation, it will become like a conglomerate. But obviously it's been eroded out and over here we have a large basalt boulder so we just have basalt going around the river so it's been transported uh, from upstream I'd say but most of it is just the siltstone and the mudstone that has been reworked Okay, so, so I first come here in 2009, so at that time this was actually classed as the Dargol Formation, which is a formation that's uh, up north, and oh, let me get this, okay, there's a, a moorable fault, 
it's somewhere up north. Maybe I'll go and see it sooner or later. So to the west of that's Dargo Formation, to the east is the determined. The Dargo Formation's been changed into Hemevale, as well as the Melbourne Formation. Gee, the bees love that. So basically, the geology of Victoria is a mess. It seems that the, every few years they're getting formations and uh, re-describing them. Uh, it's pretty complicated. So, here I am at the Plenty River. We just have a, a bit of a look at the actual geology here. Actual river deposits. So I'm, I'm seeing basalt is mixed in with the siltstone. So, yeah, basalt, 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 basalt. Uh, looks like we have a fresh outcrop of the actual melon formation. So this is, should be the original color of it. Or boiler, there used to be flour mills here obviously they don't exist that much anymore so oh broke open that's good as you can see when these weather they do change color and they become easily to break so in this outcrop I don't see any of the boomer sequence Probably because it's all. I said that that was the original colours, probably not. So it's a large outcrop in the middle of the river. This is just an erosional feature. So the laminations go this way. So if we actually look at the outcrop itself, yeah, I don't see any. I, I can't really tell anything, really. Over here I can actually see some laminations, massive bed, and fin beds, more fin beds. So this is probably just fin bed, fine bed. But I don't see many of the actual ripple laminations that we've seen. Okay, so here we go. It seems like a better exposure. It's outcropping this way. But this is all probably D sequence mudstones but fine bedded. This is probably C, so you have a ripple current this way could be it's hard to interpret this shit and here we just have deposits okay. watch out for spiders we get spiders like that big here Probably not poisonous, but you know, you'd freak out if it touches you. No.
Obviously these reeds indicate that this is actually waterlogged area. And hmm. What a native wallaby grass. Beautiful. It's good to see this grown here. So this is probably expanded from uh, when they planted it. Okay, so as you can see, this material uh, is a fine bedded, probably uh, feels like a siltstone actually. So it should be sequence D, just finely laminated. Obviously, it's basalt on top of this shit. Rabbit Warren, Rabbit Warren. There's also Wombat here. Yeah. You can go down this way. Look at that nice new housing, beautiful. So the age of this material, uh, 427, 423 million years ago. And Melbourne formations overlain by Humevale, although it could also be concurrent, so this should be the surface. Under it is the Yan Yan and the Anderson Creek formation. So the Anderson Creek formation is a lot of conglomerates. It also can, does contain a lot of fossils. This Melbourne formation doesn't seem to have that many fossils. And it was a blue tongue lizard. Ah, oh, went into the hole. Anyway. Okay, so here is a water course. So along the, the actual banks is basalt. So obviously this is a basalt formation. More basalt. It's not what we want to see. But, it's a bit high.
we just get in there. Looks a lot steeper than what I thought. It looks easier over there. God, I'm such a coward. So I'm in the riverbed now. There's some water here. We'll get thirsty. Okay, so what sequence do we see here? Obviously, the striking dips, probably about 80 degrees. I would say it's coming sort of west. Yeah, probably west. And looks like it's turned into a an anticline that way. But this looks like massive. Uh, it looks like silty sandstone. Not a silty sandstone. So in the actual boomer sequence, looks like this is silt stone, yeah. Fairly, fairly easy to break. So in the actual boomer sequence. I don't see any current ripples, so uh, this is probably sequence B, if the other sequence has been eroded. So, as the trail bikes are gone, so what we're seeing here, so this is finely laminated, feels like siltstone, and just over here, it feels like a sandstone, fairly coarse, also finely laminated. Uh, I can see there might actually be indications of uh, ripple currents. So it could be that what we're looking at is something upside down. So this could be the actual laminated grey whack sandstone and here we have laminated mudstone. So if we go over to here, we have the same sequence here and then we have the sandstone and in between we just got a massive Okay, that's definitely a sandstone, probably silty sandstone, but it's massive, and in that outcrop I don't see any indications of cross bedding. So obviously, this is probably the top, the sequence, then what we have is, um, Probably an erosional feature. Then we have the boomer sequence starting again. So we have a the actual grey whack. So it's obviously massive. Then we have some finer stuff. And obviously it's been covered up. So we'll go and try and find somewhere else. <coughs> Yes, let's fall into the river. Okay. So 
So here we have a good outcrop. Obviously thin better. You can actually see the individual beds. They're actually quite thin. Yeah, they're about three millimeters to fifteen centimeters, but obviously these are probably about five, three to five millimeters. Obviously quite massive. This looks like it might be cross bedded, so this should be sequence D in the Boomer series. Um, could also be just an artifact of the actual. No, here we have some more cross bedding. So this thing, yeah, this does show cross bedding, so this should be sequence C. Underneath, feels like a silty sandstone, so sequence B laminated sandstone then we have the actual current flows showing through so you've got the current flows there yeah, this definitely does show it and then up the top we have a finer mudstone still shows current flow so it's probably this part up here and up the top should be a massive mudstone but a lot of the times this has actually been eroded away so Fine bedded, and if we go up, we just so this looks like a massive mudstone, so that should be the top of sequence. And up, then it looks like you might have the sequence starting again. Mm. Obviously, this should be uh, indurinated with iron oxide. and if we look at the top of the bedding, looks quite nice. So, this could also be an artifact of actually weathering where the minerals have been mobilized inside the rock, and as it's gone onto the surface, it's evaporated leaving the minerals behind so that could be cause a bit of confusion or it could be that this is just showing the actual uh, formation laminations like we have here so this is a siltstone massive yeah, it feels pretty coarse massive sandstone and oh this is awesome so this shows the actual ripple currents. So the actual currents were coming from that way. So coming that way. And obviously this has been tilted. And the actual top of this formation has been eroded away. But you can see the actual current flow. The current flow would have been coming towards us. And it stops here. And you've got the siltstone. So it should actually show current flow as well. And if we go along. Okay, so. I don't see. Okay, we do have some quartz has been intruded later on. So here's another current flow. Then we have a on a siltstone actually this is probably all current flow wow this is interesting so this definitely does show why the actual currents deform the actual so this will be soft sediment deformation so as the actual sediment's been laid it's been deformed and then only later on it's been a uh, in, formed into a rock. Then we don't have any soft sediment flow here. Obviously, we do up here. And up the top, we have massive, massive, um, feels like silty sandstone again. So there's no sandstones as we know, but it's all a lot finer material.
So boomer sequences can be various thicknesses because it depends on the energy and the amount of material that is available and also the depositional setting as well. So here we have ripple currents again. That's quite nice. And also what we have here, if you like gold, so this is a massive quartz. Probably not massive, but for here it is. And it looks like it's mineralized, so it could actually contain some gold. Okay. Obviously. One more. We'll just go have a look at this sequence here, see what it shows. And sum up. Okay, so oh, this tree is going to fall down sooner or later. So what we have here, first we have siltstone. So this is pretty fine. Breaks pretty easily. I don't see any fossils. I haven't seen any fossils in this formation. And it looks like it looks pretty flat. Then we have massive mudstone, it looks like. Now this feels like silty sandstone again. So massive, so this should be a bottom of the sequence. And it goes into fine laminated sandstone. And once again, we actually have the ripple currents. So as you can see, soft sediment deformation. Then on top of that, we have sand siltstone again, but don't doesn't show any ripple currents. As we move on, I don't see any massive sandstone or siltstone. Uh, it just starts as another sandstone. So, as oh no, this one looks like it's cross bedded as well. So obviously here it's been eroded somewhere. It's a bit hard to interpret it with this um, pretty eroded outcrop. Okay, so to sum things up, this is the top of flow of a previous boomer sequence. So this is fine laminated siltstone. Uh, we don't have any massive mudstone over top. Then we have a sandstone here. Obviously it's quite thin. Then it grades into another silty sandstone with thin bedding. And then we have a so this is a sandstone as well. This seems to be quite coarse here as well. And then the sequence is quite thick. So obviously a lot of material, a lot of energy. And is that a cicada? Oh, no, just a casing. So here we actually have C. So this is, shows the actual ripple currents. So the actual flow is this way. So from east to west. It goes up there until we wrote it up the top. So that's sequence C. Then on top of that we have sequence B, which shows just fine laminations of the actual siltstone, silty mudstone. It feels like a siltstone actually. So still a lot of energy, but quieter times. And it looks like this is another siltstone. So there is no massive mudstone. Obviously, what I've read is that with boomer deposits, a lot of the times, the massive mudstones are removed by another deposit, so this one here. And obviously, another more sandstone. And the sequence is incomplete, but I can see that there is more ripple currents over that way. So, uh, it's a bit hard to get over there.
So basically, as you can see from my interpretation of an outcrop behind me, uh, it's a bit hard because a lot of the outcrop is missing, highly weathered. Uh, also, uh, sometimes the top of the boomer sequence can be removed from Avaboomer flows, so turbidite flows down the continental slope. And these ones are all pretty much, they're probably, yeah, probably 30 centimetres thickness. So all up, one flow is probably one metre thickness. And well, because I don't dabble in oceanography or anything to do with uh, turbidite flows really. This sequence probably has a lot of energy, a lot of material, but as you go along the actual outcrop, uh, this is probably all different turbidite sequences. Uh, some of it could be like a few kilometers across, some of it probably a few hundred meters. And even like if there is, I don't know, maybe there was a, a mountain there and the actual side of the mountain just collapsed into the water. Yeah, maybe like a, just a few meters. Which could have loosened this material, forcing it down. But that's all just guesswork. Anyway, I hope this helps you with your boomer sequences. Maybe I'll go and find another outcrop and see what happens. Okay, so basically, boomer sequence just indicates that there was initially massive energy. So with this massive sandstone, then we have this silty... Uh, sandstone so the energy decreased and then as the energy decreased we have this sequence that was deformed by the actual water current and any sequence on top of that would have just been over long periods of time suspended silt and clay has been deposited and then over uh, I know quite a few days a few weeks it would have the actual massive mudstone. So the massive mudstone, a lot of the times with the next sequence of flows, uh, the sandstone removes it uh, because obviously it's a top of flow. So you can see we're massive. Uh, we don't have any massive sandstone. So obviously it's well siltstone, mudstone should I say. So obviously it's been removed. So that's definitely a siltstone. I don't see any fossils. Hmm.
Nice.